Hello everyone, and welcome to what will hopefully be the final episode of me trying to set up Realism Overhaul in .90 Beta. And in this episode I want to uh, broach the subject of OpenGL and trying to use that instead of Active Texture Management. In the previous episode we saw that uh, without Active Texture Management it took about 3.2 gigs to load up uh, this particular install of Realism Overhaul, 3.2 gigs of RAM, and with Active Texture Management it took about 2.5. So in this episode I am going to temporarily delete Active Texture Management and of course I could just undelete it from my recycle bin afterwards if I decide that I want to use it, but for now I'm going to delete it. So bye bye Active Texture Management. It uh, At the beginning of uh, loading it, it uh, created a whole lot of configuration files, so I would want to just restore it from my recycle bin instead of trying to reinstall it because it would take a long time to start the game otherwise. And I'm, I'm going to go in here, I'm going to create shortcut, and I'm going to make this my OpenGL shortcut. And so this is going to be how I'm going to load the game in OpenGL. And I'm sure you've, uh, if you've been watching other videos, maybe other people have done this before. But I'm just going to put force dash OpenGL. So there's a space and then dash force dash OpenGL here in the target window. And that's that. So we've got that. And what else do I want to do? I want to install toolbar because some of the objects that I use only go into this toolbar instead of the stock toolbar so I want to add that in. Um, I want to update a few mods. Now let's take a quick look at what we should update. And the way we do that is you can see date mod. Now the date not modified is not very good here because I copied this folder back and forth uh, to check something out. Uh, really, the the last time I installed these mods, uh, most of these mods was uh, January fourth, and then some mods are more recent. So we see here, here's where I start getting some uh, some new stuff. Realism overhaul itself has been updated, and so I just want to take a quick look. I didn't change anything in here, so I'm going to just delete realism overhaul. Let's take a look at what folders realism overhaul modifies. Engine group controller. Let's get rid of engine group controller here. Uh, KS. I didn't install KS, so it's just that little file. It shouldn't matter. Uh, I'll delete module RCSFX, I think. Probably better that way. And but I'll keep uh, tag life support as is. So I'm gonna copy all of these over. Okay, and that's fine. That's exactly what I was expecting. Okay, so that is Realism Overhaul updated. And taking a quick look at all these, I downloaded a lot more mods. As usual, I just sort of downloaded everything and I'll, I'll sort it out later. And so I haven't decided whether to install a lot of these just yet. And we'll wait for probably the first episode before I start adding more stuff in. First episode of the main series where I finally get to use this properly. Uh, so yeah, that fuse box is important. I want fuse box anyway. That's just so I don't do stupid stuff, which I would otherwise often do. I think I have uh, updated FASTA somewhere in here, yeah. So I, d I deleted some of the FASA stuff. I'm just going to re-delete those. So I'm going to get rid of FASA as is. I'm going to bring in, I'll delete this JSI folder. I'm going to bring in this stuff. Okay, and I want to do that first because this is raster prop monitor. And the, uh, this isn't actually the mod raster prop monitor. This is a fix for raster prop monitor for this version of KSP. So I'm going to go into Raster Prop Monitor plugins and get this fix in. Yep. Okay, good. Hopefully that'll work. But uh, FASA, I wanted to get rid of Mercury, ICBM, Gemini. For now. I, I might also want to get rid of these fairings and parts Maybe I should just go ahead and do that, but I'll, I'll leave it be for now. I think uh, with the OpenGL thing, it should be okay. We've got an updated module manager. And when you update module manager, you should get rid of the previous version. 
We have lots of other stuff. Procedural parts has been updated. Sorry for being tedious, of course, but this is important. Updating mods is the main way you're gonna get rid of bugs, but you can also introduce bugs if you don't do it properly. Um, Kerbal Joint Reinforcement. Okay, and uh, Remote Tech, I think, was the last one I needed to do. Now, we have that settings file in, and I'll just delete everything but the settings file. And I'm going to copy everything from here. Okay, that should be good. Alright, I think that's all said as far as the stuff that we've got. Nothing else was updated as far as I know. Uh, I do want to install one more thing, and that is the Realistic Progression Zero Tech Tree. And the progression in career for that. So that requires a few things. Um, it requires the community tech tree, which is, uh, where are you, community tech tree? There. But community tech tree also requires a, uh, whatchamacallit, tech manager. So I'm going to start with tech manager. Now these things are for point, uh, point 0.25, so I'm not too sure they'll work properly here, and they might introduce new bugs. Yay! Uh, <laughs> that's just the way of things sometimes. Uh, so uh, community tech tree. Again, installing all the requirements before the mod that you want. So, requires those. It also requires um, a Lackluster Labs' stock extension. So, I've got that. It has some uh, recommended mods, but I don't want to install the recommended mods until I'm sure that the required mods and itself works. So, I'm going to install the required, required stuff. Very good. And then RP0 as expected. Now it's got a configuration for Kerbal, uh, Kerbal Construction Time and No More Grind uh, but I'm not installing those. Those are I guess uh, the recommended stuff. Okay, but I'll have to remember that I don't really have Kerbal Construction Time installed or Kerbal Attachment System so that's something to keep in mind. Now you see a very long list of mods here, so if you have any ideas about what you would like to see out of these, uh, by all means, mention them. There's a lot of stuff to work with, and I do intend to add more stuff to this, but I think uh, uh, I can add more stuff once we see how much RAM we're using. And so now we're going to see how much RAM it uses without active texture ma management, but running it through OpenGL. Okay, and unless I've forgotten something... I think we're good to go. Okay, we're in the final phases of startup as Real Solar System does its thing, and we are at uh, 2.47, 2.5 gigabytes of RAM now. So about the same as Active Texture Management Basic, and so uh, you could use either one to get the same effect. And of course, using them both, I guess, will be better. Though I haven't tried it out yet, it could cause some glitches that I don't know about. But uh, right now, about the same effect from OpenGL versus Active Texture Management Basic. Now, OpenGL ha seems to have fewer other glitches involved, uh, but it also does have a little bit more aliasing, at least on my system, with my video card. Uh, results with OpenGL vary. Uh, it will vary widely, and so... Anyway, we'll, let's take a look at it. So uh, I'm going to hop back into... This uh, default one, I don't know what flight we have in progress, but I'll probably get rid of it. Okay, untitled spacecraft, let's just recover that. Okay, so the goal here is stability, that's what I'm looking for, and I just want to do a test launch quickly. And then I'm going to do a quick career mode check to take a look at the tech tree from Realistic Progression Light. Uh, not re Realistic Progression Light, Realistic Progression... Uh, the realistic progression zero. So I've got this craft that I've already built up called Odin. Ooh. Unfortunately most of the time whenever I come back to the VAB it decides to toss me out of the building. 
Anyway, Odin is a interesting little launch vehicle. It is meant to send a Kerbal on a flyby around the moon. And I'm slowly trying to get myself back in here using the... I don't know, is there another key that I can use to zoom in? I'm using the middle mouse button, of course. Okay, that's close enough. Let me just show you the stats. Uh, this... Uh, about 1, 000, uh, 13,000 Delta V. It's got three of the H1s at the bottom. It's got two RL10s, and then it's got the Lunar Module Descent Engine as its service module engine, which is an interesting choice, if I do say so myself. Um, but yeah, it's got a little RCS. Important with the RCS, I used a offset to tuck them in a little bit so that they don't overheat. Otherwise, they I think they do. I don't know if we saw that before. I've seen it in another test. So uh, the RCS port should be a little bit tucked in. Tough to see. Uh, the RCS ports, by the way, are using Aerozine 50 and NTO, uh, nitrogen tetroxide. And that is because, of course, the, the Lunar Module Descent Engine also uses that mix. So that's what is going on up there. I'm not going to complete this mission. I'm, I'll just uh, get it to the point where I can send it on a lunar trajectory and then I'll uh, quit after that. Alright, I'm just trying to check out stability of the install. Let's take this out to the launch pad. Okay, I imported my MechJeb windows from another install, so that's what you see around there. I don't think I need to have fuse box up there, so I'm gonna and Fusebox is one of the ones that I deliberately wanted Toolbar to be here for, so I can get rid of that like that. Okay, well, I'm not going to try and line up with the moon. I'm just going to go ahead and launch. 218 ton vehicle, fairly light for something meant for a lunar flyby. We'll see how this thing handles. I don't know, I've got three engines at the bottom. I don't know very many launchers that have three engines on their main stage. It's probably a bad idea altogether. It's also probably a bad idea to have these these clamps. In fact, uh, if I can separate those clamps separately, let's see. That's you, is it? Hopefully. No, 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 no. Ah, uh, you're not getting the feel of this at all. Okay, forget it. Forget it. This is probably gonna end up in a mess, but let's see. Alright, Bill. I guess Jeb must have been the one I recovered. Alright, Bill. Hmm, getting about 7 frames per second here. We'll see what kind of physics frame rate I, uh, physics rate I get. All right, uh, we don't need this stage here. Let's go. Especially with my EBB Mission Control series, 
and it might be that I might have to do my EPB mission control series without deadly re-entry now, just because of this message. It's really ridiculous. So, I'm a little bit concerned about that. If anybody knows how to get rid of that thing, uh, that is a high priority now. I like that real plume doesn't have too much of a frame rate effect. It's pretty good. Nor much of a physics effect. Interestingly, you can see how many particles it's creating here in smokescreen. It's quite amusing. This gets to pretty high G's, so not as bad as uh, the previous test vehicle. You can see our apolapsis is already getting uh, into healthy territory. We don't need to be going up too much more than this. Okay, that's that. Separation. And second stage. I didn't have separation rockets, unfortunately. Now the much, 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 much quieter RL-10s. <laughs> okay, and this is going to be a long burn. This thing has uh, 7 minutes and 15 seconds left to go. So I'll probably stop recording and catch up with you close to the end of this. Okay, we are approaching the end of the second stage burn. Uh, rocket has performed okay, though the staging, the stages might need a little bit of tweaking in terms of balance. Um, I think this one started out with too low uh, thrust to weight ratio, in fact. So, yep, but otherwise we're approaching apoapsis, we're running out of the stage time. We'll end up having to pass apoapsis a little bit with the third stage completing our orbital burn, but that's not a problem at all. Okay, that's the end of that stage. Separation. And burn. So this, as advertised, is the Lunar Module Descent Engine. Got all sorts of happy features, including the fact that it can throttle, which is not something that most engines can do in in realism overhaul can't throttle fully, it can't go from 0 to 100 but it can go far enough so we're gonna pass apoapsis here and but we'll end up in an okay orbit not a great orbit but an okay orbit and I'll catch you once we're close to that alright getting close to orbit here I've pointed the spacecraft up a bit to make sure that our apoapsis doesn't go completely out of control, but it probably still will get a little bit rowdy. Okay, here we go. And it's going up now. I'll shut it off once the apoapsis gets to 320, uh, if it does. Might end up a little bit more circular than I thought we would. Okay, that's close enough. Okay, 318 by 283. That's pretty good for the first launch of a new launcher, for me anyway. Alright, uh, but it could use a lot more tweaking, but the important thing is, so far, the game hasn't crashed. I say that uh, hoping not to jinx the situation. But we've got one more thing to do. I want to make a burn for the moon. And it doesn't look like our timing is all that great. Uh, I'm doing an off-plane transfer, which means that I'm burning out of either the ascending or descending node, which will save me from having to do one of those uh, inclination correction burns, which would cost me a bundle. Of course, we could have just timed it right. And maybe I won't hit the moon Maybe I'll just uh, get in the vicinity of the moon's orbit just to demonstrate that it's possible. And then uh, I want to check stability on returning to the VAB. But no, it looks like... Yeah, okay, we've got something. And we needed the free return trajectory, by the way. That was That's important because he doesn't have the fuel to get back otherwise. Now, all the fine-tuning is just messing with the periapsis side and raising it. We could probably fix it out there where we hit the descending node and uh, get a good closer approach to the moon with an adjustment there. This is a pretty standard 
uh, Lunar Burn. So I think I'll go with this one. Now we can't turn without uh, RCS, so there's a good chance to check out RCS. Uh, RCS works with Aerozine and Nitrogen Tetroxide. So, and consumption... I don't know why it's consuming HDP though. I guess that's something it needs to do, okay. Wouldn't have thought of that. Okay, anyway, we're oriented properly. It's going to take the better part of six minutes to do this burn, so right around here would be good. How is the fuel? The fuel should be pressurized, so it's all nice and settled. Okay. We're lined up. Let me take Smart ASS off. And here we go. Ah, oh, ten minutes. Well, no, that's totally wrong. I mean, the stage time is only 6 minutes 52 seconds. Can't be estimated burn is 10 minutes. Um, the terrain textures look a little bit fuzzy compared to what I'm used to. I'm used to much better quality textures, I think. I mean, uh, in previous versions I was able to use the highest uh, resolution textures. Uh, in this version, well, maybe now that I'm using the OpenGL slash, uh, I mean, I was using Active Texture Management and OpenGL has brought, it's still 2.5 gigabytes worth of RAM the game is taking up, so maybe I can squeeze in the higher Earth textures, but I swear that uh, it's uh, taking up a ridiculous amount of RAM, those textures. I've tested out the highest texture package in a separate install, and it is a lot more than I thought it used to be um, in terms of RAM impact. So uh, if if you're having trouble just make sure you... oh 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 uh, let's get uh, Smart ASS on. Yeah just make sure you start out with the smallest texture package with uh, Realism Overhaul and be selective about uh, going higher in texture because because that stuff seems to have a huge impact and uh, for some reason with my card uh, the DDS thing didn't really help so don't know in fact I would say it's uh, even worse right now though it might be that the textures themselves are more complicated and uh, larger okay we're coming close to the end of the burn here and certainly the part where being able to throttle the engine will be most helpful going to do just that. Of course we could also use RCS to fine-tune things afterwards. Okay, well we've got a moon encounter and I'm going to call that success. I want to check out RCS again. It does use this HTP, which I'm, I didn't expect it to. I wonder why that is. I don't recall that being advertised. But I guess that's something to keep in mind if I'm going to be doing any sort of missions in the future. Um, anyway, I'd say that this test was a success so far. There's one other thing I want to test. I'm not going to bring him to the moon or anything. I just wanted to get to this point. And now I'm going to revert and see if it crashes when I revert. So I'm going to revert flight to vehicle assembly building. And if, I, I just want to see whether it crashes or not. Because it's done that before. So let's find out. Nope, we're back to vehicle assembly building fine. Well, I wouldn't say without any problems. Uh, with the one problem where we're zoomed way out and outside of the building because, I don't know, I guess that's a thing now. But that is a minor issue to deal with and uh, in the future I'll try to deal with that off camera. So, ran the game for quite a while, no, no stability problems. Uh, 2.65 gigabytes of RAM right now. And the frame rate's a little bit iffy. There's a little bit of um, uh, you can see aliasing all over the place, uh, uh, and that's something that happens more in OpenGL mode for me. But that might be my video card. 
Uh, let me check out career mode and the realistic progression zero tech tree to make sure that at least loads up properly. All right, so let's go to that. So here we go, start new, let's say YouTube career, career difficulty settings, normal. I think uh, on the first try with this, I should say normal, start. Okay, uh, tech life support, uh, allow respawn, no. Uh, tech manager, tech manager is currently disabled. Enable it above, yeah, sure. Uh, community tech tree, I think is the thing. Right. And then, is this, oh, well, okay, thanks, I've got it. Yeah, that, that looks like the kind of stuff I would exp community tech tree. I guess, yes, I, I think this is definitely our uh, realistic progression zero tech tree. What do we get here? Uh, this is 25 science. What's what's in the start? Okay, hypergolic fluid, redstone clamp. Let's just go to the VAB and take a look what parts we start out with. Okay, uh, sounding rocket avionics package. How big is that? Oh, small, tiny, good. I like small. Uh, fuel tanks. Uh, mop procedural fuel tanks. I'm sure it's limited. Let's see what it's limited to in terms of size. 2.7 diameter is quite a lot. Oh, that's, that's huge. All right. Uh, engines. Uh, Aero B sustainer. Cute. Saw a few boosters, saw rocket boosters, and uh, an ullage rocket, which we could get different use out of. Uh, oh, did it actually allow me to bring that out? Wow. Okay, um, Annalyn and what was the I for? Uh, it's red fuming nitric acid 3. What's the uh, inhibited, right? Inhibited red fuming nitric acid 3. Okay, very good. Alternate configurations even. Okay. One time. The ignition is only for one time. I like my old uh, one kilonewton thrusters myself, but and this only has a very definite thrust of uh, 52. Is it tweakable? Okay, it is. Within smaller limits, though. Hmm. So we could bring it out and we get this big saw rocket booster. But if we try and tweak it at all, we're limited to 0.2. That's sort of not nice. Antisocial of it. All right, all right. Well, uh, tell you what, uh, this sort of thing is more for playing around with when I'm going to start the series. So, so with that, I think we've got an install that works. It's stable. Uh, we went through a whole uh, flight up to and including translunar injection, and uh, I haven't had a single crash throughout the whole thing. Uh, we've got engines. We've got the tech tree if we want to use it. Yeah. So uh, next time you see me post. Uh, a realism overhaul video it should be the start of a new series all right and uh, we'll just cross our fingers that everything really is working out as well as i think it's going to work out all right with that uh, thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time